Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 12. I'm here to do what I like to do most, which is to test aircraft. And we are testing a selection of freeware aircraft because there are quite a few freeware aircraft available for X-Plane 12 right now. And we'll only get through a few of them in this video. And the first one up is the Douglas X-3 Stiletto, which struck me as the most obvious one that demands to be tested. It is from Dan Hopgood 1. And it is a fairly rare aircraft to see in a, uh, in a simulator. And uh, it is available on xplane.org. I'll link the site in the video description. The plane isn't exactly as it was in real life. And that is because uh, the goal of this particular version was to try and simulate what it should have been rather than what it was. The problem was it was fitted with underwhelming engines. Uh, lower than the specs that it was supposed to have because they couldn't fit the engines that uh, it was originally supposed to have that would have the power that could get it to the speeds that it was supposed to be operated at. So uh, Dan Hopgood uh, decided to put in the engines from the Supercat Jaguar. Now, <laughs> uh, uh, those engines were first uh, run, uh, had their first development run in 1968, whereas the Stiletto flew first in 1952, so they're 16 years more advanced in terms of engine technology, which is why they apparently, according to uh, the description, uh, can get uh, the plane to Mach 2.75. Well, we'll see about that, but uh, that, that might be pushing things a little bit, but uh, I'll grant that physically speaking, uh, the engine could probably fit, of course, because it's a much more advanced engine, uh, it can actually fit into the space allowed for the engines here. Uh, but uh, whether uh, everything could take that kind of speed, I don't know. We will see. And that, yes, that's what we're here for. So uh, I'm going to try and put in the maximum amount of weight. I'm not going to touch the center of gravity. That's how it was. And we are going to try this out. Okay, I... Uh... I think I'll turn off XP Realistic just to see how the mod itself is without any other complications. Uh, the cockpit uh, seems to be trying to do, be a replica here and we'll see how that is. The Mach number dial only goes up to one because uh, the real one was fitted with underwhelming engines so it didn't need too much more than that. We probably would, but we'll see how it goes. Otherwise, yeah, it is sort of uh, putting on photos of the stuff, and we'll see whether the dials work properly or not. Um, externally, uh, probably the wings are super shiny, and you can sort of see that they learned some things from this when it comes to the F-104. The engine placement isn't very different from the F-101 either, but yep, it's not too bad. It's got an extra fuel tank on the bottom because, well, you can tell it can't fit too much fuel in the wings, so yeah. Alright. Okay. Well, those dials work. Interesting sounds. I expect that we have to go pretty fast in order to go up. Yeah. Okay, we're climbing now, like at 200 knots. Gear up. Gear coming up is not a trivial thing, as I've discovered from testing uh, payware aircraft that uh, were for X-Plane 11. About 380 knots, 90 knots, 400 knots. It's a rocket plane now. It's like, I think what people envision the F-104 to be. The F-104 is a bit heftier, though. It looks like all the dials are doing what they ought to. Sometimes I've encountered these sort of uh, photo, photo cockpits and the dials don't do what they ought to, but this seems okay.
don't know why there's this edge on the wings. Uh, sort of a diagonal line on the wings. Don't know if that's supposed to be how it is. Okay, I'm gonna have to bring up other data because, uh, to be honest, the info isn't great right now. Okay, we've got some of the information up there. I guess it must be using from the external tank because it's not using the fuel that's indicated there. Okay, Mach 1.2 there. I guess the dial here curves around, so after you pass Mach 1, now it's reading that 0.3 as Mach 1.3. Nice plumage. It feels like it's really hollow. Not sure I would like to turn it <laughs> at this point, but there's all sorts of coupling issues and stuff like that, so. Hadn't entirely worked out all the supersonic kicks. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it's feeling a little bit wobbly right now, that's for sure. Oh, 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 oh. I, I am not doing this. I'm trying to stop it from rolling like that. Okay, so it has some interesting uh, bad dynamics past Mach 2. I I'm cutting... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Well, that's actually interesting and nice in a way. Yeah, I was just trying to fly it steadily. Wow, I made a lot of loops there. <laughs> my uh, my uh, trail is... Really special. Okay. All right, all right, all right, come on. Yeah, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Come on. Okay, we got it back. Alright, well I think that's enough excitement. <laughs> uh, I didn't get to Mach 2.75, but uh, Mach 2 was quite enough for me. <laughs> uh, oh, wrong thing. I wonder what V is here. I'm so used to Flight Sim now, where V is the map. I don't know why they made V the map, but... That's got sort of a X3 sort of icon there. Maybe we should go to Vandenberg. I'll just fly to Vandenberg now. So yeah, certain adverse reactions at about Mach 2 might make this interesting. You can practice your recoveries from that. Could be fun. Just a little sprucing up and it looked quite good. Maybe the wings and such don't need to be that shiny. Alright, there's the coast. Let's see how this thing lands. I expect fast. Well, Glad Fork Boy's photo scenery still works around here. Looking nice. Again, this is not the default scenery, folks, but it is available for free, so. Fork Boy's Ortho 4XP Ortho Photos. Available also at xplane.org. Anyway, obviously, because it's such a rare aircraft to be able to try out anyway, and. The creator certainly put some thought into it by replacing the engines uh, to make it somewhat more fun. 
Though, maybe an uh, original engine variant would be nice too. Uh, I'm not going to be picky about the visuals too much. It's not like there are a whole lot of versions of this plane floating around or something. There is an air brake. It's not doing a huge amount, but it's probably doing enough. The photo scenery around Vandenberg is predictably not great. <laughs> Because, you know, it's an airbase and everything. Well, I can see the runway from the side window. It's just when it's in front, the eye point isn't great. The panel is a little bit high. I mean, the angle attack we need just to stay going at a reasonable speed down at this speed is pretty high. Got flaps. Okay, 200 knots. <laughs> I don't know what button releases the parachute. We're not slowing down soon enough. Okay, well, I'll need to figure out what button is the parachute. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I guess we survived. I mean, you know, if uh, it wanted to kill us, it would have. So, okay. Okay. Anyway, now for something completely different. The right flyer. <laughs> uh, because, why not? Glider start? It has an option for a glider start. I don't want a glider start. Winch launch. Ground base winch. Okay, we can do that. So it's like that, is it? We can't even attempt to take off without anything? Release brakes for winch. Press spacebar to release winch. Well, let's just do it sooner rather than later. Ah yes, I think uh, having a Mach number for this particular plane might be over overdoing it. <laughs> it doesn't feel that different from the flight sim one actually. It actually doesn't feel that different from the, X, uh, the flight sim one. It's a little bit easier to handle, but I don't think there's much wind right now. We are certainly engaged in heavier than air flight. Yeah, I would say this is currently easier to handle than the Flight Sim 1, though I don't feel like this is unrealistic. Okay, well, I'm just going to try and set it down. Yeah, of course, there is practically no wind right now, so it's beneficial. Okay, we're back on the ground. Alright, well that probably was more than what the right flyer did on its first flight anyway. So, uh, this right flyer is also by Dan Hopgood, uh, who clearly likes experimental aircraft. <laughs> this obviously is one too. Next up, we are going to try a plane by Dom Henry, who uh, did a lot of planes for X-Plane 11, though I mostly associate Dom Henry with uh, planes from the World War II era. Uh, one that caught my eye this time was the B-1B, and the B-1B uh, I consider to be probably the most beautiful plane. I mean, it's up there with the Concorde, and sometimes I feel like Concorde's better, and the, sometimes I feel like the B-1B is better, but it's certainly a very beautiful plane. Again, I'm not going to touch the center of gravity, even though it's like uh, really fat. Well, it says cannot be altered because there is no payload stations on the aircraft, so it has to be where it is, and we'll hope that that's okay. That's a lot of flight time, it's saying right there, but um, we'll just go for something in the middle, yeah. And we'll go with Vandenberg again. Um, let me uh, try a non-manual. Let's get real-world weather this time. 
Manual certainly helped with the right flyer, but we'll go with real world weather and see how it looks. And again, just to evaluate the mod, I'm not going to have XP realistic active. Attention all aircraft. Vandenberg so, this is familiar. I think this cockpit, it's the same as what it was in x 11. I'm familiar with this cockpit, so uh, this is basically what we had in x 11. And let's see how the B1B works. has a bird-like look to it. More than many other planes. Feels fine right now as far as flying it is concerned. I mean, I like the external model a lot uh, considering this is freeware. The instrumentation is great. I mean, it's obviously custom. So I appreciate that. Auto wing sweep. Engaged. Oh, okay. So we have to press that button. Auto wing sweep to engaged. And as the wing sweeps, uh, we are pitching down very precipitously, actually. So I have to retrim. Okay, we went past Mach 1 right there as the wing was sweeping. Well, it's very loud with afterburners on. Now, it's not supposed to get too much past Mach 1. Basically, Mach 1.25 is the limit, so we're on full afterburner here. It keeps wanting to veer to the left for some reason. I'll try and aileron trim it. It is appropriately really hard to get out of the transonic region. If I take it out of afterburner, Honestly, I don't see what the afterburner does, to be honest. Um, it doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. Uh, except make noise. It's a lot of sound and fury, but then again, we're going down now, so... Let me try and retrim here. But yeah, as far as what speed it adds to the situation, not a lot. Which is rough because the thrust, I think, is like double with the afterburner on. And the sound is like many orders of magnitude higher. Well, let's try the afterburner again. I just don't see what the afterburner actually does, but well, I'm reasonably reasonably convinced that it's not going to overperform. In other words, go much faster than Mach 1.25. So we'll we'll call it on that. Let me just try and land it since we're uh, pretty far out here already. Well, let's just go back to Edwards. One reason to keep the auto wing sweep off is because. Um, you, uh, you have to keep re-trimming all the time as it sweeps, so best not to bother with that. Well, it's feeling super wobbly right now. Let me just slow it down. Uh, yeah, it's feeling super wobbly right now for some reason. Try and get out of transonic here. Interesting wobbliness. Let me see what the autopilot might make of this, because it is super wobbly. Okay, well, the autopilot is certainly helpful. I don't know if it was 
squirrely because we've broken something or there's something else going on. It's still squirrely right now, actually. But yeah, the autopilot is still wobbling it. I'll try and slow down a bit. Maybe I'll uh, let it do the auto wing sweep again. Maybe it just doesn't like this wing sweep. Uh, it's gotten into this motion here and it doesn't want to stop the motion. Okay, now it's stopped. So I think it's when it goes transonic and maybe... Oh no, it started up again now. I don't know. Well, turning and hanging down... It doesn't seem too bad right now. Alright, turning towards the runway. Got to try air brakes and turning the all pilot off. And right now the plane is definitely stable. Okay, I'm gonna turn off auto wing sweep. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I mean, I doubt it would engage when we land, but, you know, just in case. That would not be a good thing. Doing a lot of swaying back and forth right now. Like, side to side in yaw. I'm not trying to do that. It's just sort of going side to side there. Hopefully it will settle down. Okay, probably a little bit fast, but... But this time we're okay. We are not going to overshoot the runway this time. Okay. And I think uh, with this one, I'll wrap it up for now. Three planes per video is probably good. And so as I try to taxi this off. I think my brake key is not what I think it is, is the problem. But anyway, yes, as we taxi off, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.